Hi mom, it's me, Riley. I apologize for not being able to come home for Christmas this year. I had to work overtime and there were no available flights. Oh, Riley. It's been a while since we last saw each other. I received the Christmas gift you sent me in the mail. It has indeed been a while, mom. How have you been? And I'm relieved the gift arrived safely. I was worried it might get lost. Me too. Maybe next year we can spend more time together. It seems like you're always caught up in work and stress. Whenever we meet, you look exhausted and overwhelmed. I'm sorry. I'm always swamped with work at the end of the year. I understand. It just seems like you prioritize everything over your own family. I can't help but wonder if you're being a good mother to your kid. She's still young and needs her mother around. I can't say for certain, but I'm doing my best, and that's what counts, right? You can't say for certain? Are you expecting my son to make up for that too? It's like everything else comes before your family. You seem to be obsessed with money. Anyway, you won't hear any complaints from me. If you send me an expensive gift for Christmas. But I will say that you wasted your money sending me such high quality steaks because I thought it was actually a terrible present. It's so obvious you don't have a single sincere bone in your body and just do everything out of obligation or guilt. Doesn't everyone like steaks? So I thought getting some would make you happy. And I made sure that it was some of the best beef money can buy. But you don't like it? I ate what you sent me. I wasn't going to let any of that go to waste. But next time, I want you to give me something that I really want. Something that will last longer than a meal. Something you really want? Like what, for example? Hmm, if I had to name something off the top of my head, what about a massage chair? You sacrifice your family for work, so you should be able to afford one, right Riley? I'm sure that I'm not asking for too much. I don't sacrifice my family for work, and a massage chair is not a Christmas present. That's way too expensive and extravagant to ask for. I didn't even get anyone in my own family something that costly. It's just an example. Come on, Riley, lighten up a bit. You should learn to not take everything so seriously. People like you who have no sense of humor are such a drag. You don't always have to be so uptight and rigid about everything you know. I'm sorry. Ah, so what are your plans for New Year's? Are you planning to come over to my house? I've been meaning to ask you about that. Is it okay if I come over? That's fine by me, I suppose. I just wonder if there will be enough space for you. You know that my daughter and her family are coming over too, right? And then there will also be my son and that granddaughter of yours here as well. It's going to get pretty crowded here. Oh, well in that case, maybe it's better if I don't come over this time. Maybe next year will work out better for everyone involved. It seems like this will be more convenient and save you some trouble anyway. Really? Are you sure you don't mind? I'm sorry for making you spend New Year's alone at home by yourself, but that's okay, right? You might have felt a little awkward celebrating with us anyway since we're not really your family after all. And look at it this way. You can finally take a break and relax at home. Lord knows you need it. You always look so exhausted and worn out from work. Yeah. Maybe Nate and Kate can come and wish you a happy new year on my behalf. That would be nice. I'm going to make sure that this get together is better than ever. It's been so long since just the family has been together. There's always been some extra people around. <laughs> It's fine by me if you don't come, but can you make sure that Nate brings over something good? It's the least you can do for me, since I have to deal with your daughter coming over to my place. I'll make sure to do that. Don't worry about it. I'm going to get your favorite desserts and have him give them to you. You'll absolutely love them, I promise. Just remember that a lot of shops close early at the end of the year and a lot of places are closed on New Year's Day. I don't want to be disappointed again, Riley. Happy New Year, Mom. I hope you had a good one. Hey, today is January 2nd. It's not New Year's anymore, but Happy New Year, I guess, even though you are a day late. I'm not late. Everybody knows that you can wish someone a Happy New Year up to three days later. Tell me something. Aren't you my daughter-in-law, Riley? Shouldn't you wish me a Happy New Year on New Year's Day? Or am I just an afterthought? You know what? It's fine, actually. I don't expect you to understand common sense. You're always so clueless and ignorant, and everyone needs to explain the most basic things to you over and over again. I'm sure that's what the problem is. So what is it? What do you want? This better be important. It's about my daughter's Christmas present. Why was my daughter the only one who didn't get one from you? I heard that you waited to give out everyone's Christmas present until everyone got together for New Year's Eve. Everyone got one, except Kate. 
Don't tell me that you and Nate are still mad about that. <laughs> Christmas gifts are not mandatory or obligatory. I don't have to give one to anyone if I don't want to. Why should I have to give a gift to someone you gave birth to? Were you hoping to take whatever I gift I gave her for yourself? That's not the point. Nate and I are hurt by how differently you treat us compared to others. You gave presents to Clara's children in front of Kate, making her feel left out as your granddaughter. She must have been expecting to get one too, since she's your grandchild as well. Don't you have any idea how much that can hurt a little kid's feelings or the effects it can have on their self-esteem? I didn't think about that. I just gave gifts to Clara's children because I felt like it and forgot to get one for Kate. Besides, kids shouldn't just expect gifts without earning them or being grateful. Still, you really crossed a line this time, and I don't think you understand how hurtful and cruel your actions were to Kate. If you're only going to give gifts to some people and not others, then do it in a private way away from her where she can't see it or hear about it. Or you could have given it to Clara beforehand so that she could have given it to them later when Kate wasn't around. Listen here, Riley. Why should I have to give a gift to someone who shares your blood? And now you're telling me you're shocked and outraged that I didn't give her one like it was something I had to do by law or something? It really is disgusting to hear how you talk about me. You expect me to get her a gift and then get angry when I don't? Get yourself some class. You behave that way to my daughter just because she's mine? Yeah. Look at you now finally starting to get a clue after all this time. I never thought I'd see the day when the light bulb would go off in your head. Ever think it's because you never listen to me when I tell you to do things like quit your job and stay at home with your family maybe? And on top of that, you are never willing to make any type of compromise or sacrifice for anyone but yourself. You really bring out the worst in me, Riley. I swear. I know you don't like me. You've made that more than clear over the years. But please don't take it out on my daughter. She did nothing wrong to you or anyone else. Not to mention, she's Nate's daughter too, and he loves her very much. Can you try to not think about me when you look at her? Can you try to see her as an individual person and not as an extension of me? Even if she's my son's kid, she still has half of your dirty and tainted blood running through her veins. And when I look at her, I see more of you and her than I do of him. There is no way I'll ever like her or treat her well. <laughs> On top of that, my other grandchildren are so much cuter and smarter than your daughter because they look like my daughter and take after her. If my other grandchildren are going to be anything like your daughter, then I don't want any more. Is that so? So you're still going to treat my daughter and Clara's children differently? Tell me, what's so wrong about that? Who I like and don't like is up to me and me alone. I'm allowed to make my own decisions, you know? I don't need you or anyone else to tell me what to do or how to feel. Yeah, you're right. Alright, I have nothing else to say about this matter. Well, I'm surprised. You finally get it. You and your daughter are so annoying and irritating. You two must really love to drive me up the wall with your antics and complaints. You know, when your daughter found out she wasn't getting a Christmas present from me, she kept whining and nagging to my son over and over again about how there wasn't anything for her under the tree. She made such a big fuss over it and threw a tantrum. Seriously, is she still a baby? She definitely gets her lack of brains and common sense from you. She just can't read the room or the situation at all. How could you say that? Oh no, did I offend you? It seems like you are angry with me now. Hopefully your daughter doesn't have any more bad influences around her. You are really raising a monster. No, you didn't offend me. I'm just tired of arguing with you. Well, good, because I'm tired of arguing with you too. You always make everything so difficult and complicated. Hey Riley, I have something to ask you. What's the matter? You built your parents a two-family house, right? Yes, I did. Nate and I decided to do that for them as a gift. But I am much older than they are, and I will need to be cared for much sooner than they will. Shouldn't it be me who is living together with you too? Isn't that what a proper son and daughter-in-law would do for their mother-in-law? What are you buying your parents a two-family house for? Who's going to look after me when I get old and sick? Ah, you aren't getting it. We're only going to look after my parents. <laughs> we don't have any plans to look after you or live with you. What, are you forgetting how old I am? I'm really going to need help getting around soon. I can't do everything by myself anymore. I need someone to take care of me and keep me company. No, I didn't forget. 
Nate agreed to let them live with us. He said he wanted to be close to my parents and make sure they are comfortable and happy. It doesn't matter if you're the only daughter. Didn't you marry into our family? That makes you my daughter too. Why are you going to push me aside just to look after your parents? Am I second place yet again? You've never considered me a member of the family until you conveniently decide that I need to take care of you in the near future. On top of that, you won't show my daughter any affection or kindness. You said you'll never like her because she's mine. What makes you think that I would build a house to live together with someone like that? The fact is, you're part of my family now whether you like it or not. The right thing to do is to look after me and respect me as your elder. That's what a good daughter-in-law would do. So what? Nate said he doesn't think of you as a mother or as family, and I have to say that I feel the same way too. I always try to be kind to you and stay true to myself in hopes that you would accept me one day for who I am, but I understand now that it was all a complete waste of time and energy. If I don't accept you, it's because you didn't try hard enough. You just need to put in some more effort and show some more gratitude. Don't try to put this on me, okay? I'm not the one to blame here. You're the one who failed to win me over. It's okay if you don't like me, but what's not okay is how you treat my daughter. You love to hate on her and make her feel bad about herself. What parent would be okay with that? You love to constantly compare Kate with your other grandchildren, and even if you felt that way, you should be an adult and keep it to yourself. You shouldn't go running around making a show of it and rubbing it in her face. Hey, you watch your mouth. I'm your mother-in-law. You really are an ungrateful, disrespectful little brat. You should show some respect and appreciation for me. Say whatever you want. I'm completely over getting hurt by what you say to me and how you treat me. I'm not going to take the words of someone who hates me to heart anymore. Besides, the feeling is mutual. I don't think highly of you either. Well, look at you. Now you're going to mock me and try to make me look like a fool. Fine. Have it your way. I'm done getting involved with your family. It's time to just cut ties and go our separate ways. Besides, I still have my daughter's family anyway. They love me and treat me well. All right, totally fine by me. You can rest assured that we won't be coming around anymore or bothering you ever again. Things really started to go downhill when my son married you. You're such a bad influence on him and on your daughter. Your daughter is going to grow up not knowing what love feels like because the two of you are so busy with work and don't spend any time with her. And that's when you'll wish that you've listened to me more and followed my advice. You're really going to regret it. Mark my words. Ah, I'm going to make sure that I have nothing to do with you from now on. Okay, whatever. I don't care what you think or say about me or my family. We're happy and we love each other. That's all that matters to us. You can keep your opinions and your judgments to yourself. We don't need them or want them. Goodbye, Hazley. I hope you have a nice life. Hello, Riley. Can I talk to you about something? It's really important. Huh. Oh my goodness. Who was texting me? Oh, my mother-in-law. <laughs> Didn't you say you were done with me and my family and won't contact me anymore? I just want to have a small chat. I think just a little bit is okay. I'm just really worried about my son. I'm concerned about his well-being and happiness. What are you worried about? I'm worried about the fact that you two are living together with your parents. Are you trying to make me feel ashamed or embarrassed in front of everyone? What am I supposed to tell other people when they ask me where my son lives? We may technically live together, but we have two separate living spaces. The only shared space is the kitchen. Otherwise, it's like two separate houses. Plus, we make sure to respect each other's privacy and not get in each other's way. Our life really hasn't changed that much since we moved in with them. Is that so? By the way, do you remember what today is? Huh? Why do you ask? Because today is my birthday. Ah, come to think of it, that's right. It is your birthday. That's it? That's all you have to say to me? Yes, that's all. You didn't send me anything. You didn't even call me or text me to wish me a happy birthday. That's right. I didn't send you anything or contact you because I don't want to have anything to do with you. And now all you're going to say is, that's right. I deserve a little more respect than that. You used to send me a present every year, so why not this year? What's so different this year? Are you seriously asking me that? Mom, do you have dementia or something? How are you not remembering what happened last month? What? How dare you insult me like that? I'm totally fine. My doctor said I'm in perfect health, actually. Why are you being so rude and disrespectful? What's gotten into you? Well, have you completely forgotten what went on between us last month? Don't you remember how you treated me and my daughter on Christmas? After all of that, why should I still have to send you a present or wish you a happy birthday? 
because I'm your mother-in-law. It is what a good daughter-in-law would do. Do I have to teach you everything? Don't you know anything about manners and etiquette? But you said you were done with us and that you were going to keep your distance from us. And you also said we were no longer family and that we were dead to you. How do you not understand any of this? Is it that you don't understand English? Oh, come on. We both know that's not it. You're just trying to be rude and mean now. You guys need to respect me and honor me as your elder. No matter how many times I say I'm going to cut you out of my life, I am still your mother-in-law and Nate's mother after all. You have to forgive me and love me unconditionally. Weren't you taught to be kind and courteous to your elders in school? I'm not sure I believe in respecting someone just because of their age. If you want to be treated kindly, you need to become someone that I can respect. Now, if you'll excuse me, please don't contact me again or bother me ever again. Hold up. What did you guys do? My daughter didn't even come over to visit me. You had to have done something. We used to always celebrate my birthday together. There must be something bothering her and her husband. You should talk to her and find out what it is. And what could that possibly be? When I talked to her last week, she told me that you keep pestering her and pressuring her to live together with you. She said that every time she talks to you, all you do is nag her about moving in with you and leaving her husband behind. It's because I hold a special place in her heart, you know? She really loves me and cares about me. She has always put me first, no matter what. I am number one in her life. So wouldn't it be normal for us to live together? It's what a good daughter would do for her mother. And someone who loves their mother that much would naturally want to live with her and make her happy. It doesn't seem like your daughter and her husband want that. They want to have their own space and their own life, or they are tired of you interfering and meddling in their affairs. Something like that. How can you say such horrible things about me and my daughter? We have a very close and loving relationship. She would never get tired of me or want to get away from me. When you treated Kate and I horribly over the Christmas gift, they reached out afterwards to apologize about how you behaved. Why should she have to be the one to reach out about that? You were completely in the wrong, and yet she was kind enough to address what happened. What? Why did she apologize for that? Any person that had a sense of right and wrong would apologize when their parents stepped out of line and did something hurtful and disrespectful. She told me she tried talking to you about it so many times. She noticed how you treated me differently and unfairly right after Nate and I got married. But she gave up since it seemed hopeless and you were never willing to acknowledge it or change it. But she's always made sure to apologize to me for whatever you did. I always thought it was a bit unfair for you to make her do that, honestly. I was only doing what I thought was best for you. Are you sure? To tell you the truth, it sure didn't seem that way. I think you did it because you wanted to hurt my feelings, not because you thought it was what was good for me. You never liked me and always looked for ways to get under my skin and make me feel bad. And now you've made my family and Clara's family give up everything for you this time. What did you give up? We gave up on being a family. I told you that I'm going to distance myself from you and cut off all contact with you. This means we're not family anymore. You completely destroyed that for us. Clara and her husband must have gotten so drained and exhausted from you trying to force them to live with you. Even they need a break and are trying to put up some boundaries between you and them. What? Who will look after me if my daughter and her husband don't live with me? I don't know. That's not my problem at all. But I can tell you that it won't be Nate and me. And don't expect us to change our mind on this matter. And why is that? I don't understand what exactly I did to deserve this. I'm all alone now that my husband is gone. What if something happens to me and there's no one there to help me? I could die, you know? And it could all be prevented if someone just lives with me. I've sacrificed everything for Nate and Claire to make sure they were raised right and grew up to be who they are today. And now they want to act like this? What is this? You guys need to appreciate me more. And I don't think anyone knows exactly how much I gave up for my children. Frankly, you aren't someone we can appreciate. And living with you would be extremely difficult and stressful. I don't think it would be fair or healthy for us since you never seem to want to change your ways or admit your mistakes. You've always been mean and abusive to me. I can't think of the last time you said anything nice or positive to me. You treat me like I'm invisible and don't matter by doing things like not making a plate of food for me and only me at the table, or not inviting me to family events or outings. But I honestly don't care about all that anymore. It's in the past and I've learned to let it go and move on with my life. And all of this is because I'm the one who didn't quit my job when you told me to, right? That's the excuse you're going to use for treating me the way you've been treating me, right? Yes. Is it not your fault for not listening to what I said? Do you not always brush my words off as if they don't matter? How am I the one to blame here? 
But that's not my daughter's fault, right? So why are you taking out how you feel about me on my daughter? Why are you punishing her for something she has no control over? My daughter did absolutely nothing to you, and yet you still hurt that poor little girl's feelings. She's just in elementary school, you know? She's still a child who needs love and care. I think being around you is not good for my daughter if this is how you're going to act. You are just going to keep on hurting her like you do to me. And it's not healthy for her to yearn for the love of someone who will never give it. That's why I decided that I don't think it would be good for you to stay in our lives. Okay, okay. You've made your point. I'll admit that I was wrong for not giving her a Christmas present. After I thought about it some more, I can say that I was a little bit out of line. I see what you are saying. It's too late for apologies. It's too late to make things right. An apology won't erase the pain and the hurt you've caused us and make us forget or forgive what you've done to us. Riley, I thought stopping you both from working was for the best. Your kid is still in elementary school, and if you and Nate are both busy working, she might not get enough attention and feel neglected by her parents. There's no way you could keep up with all of that while working as much as you do. For example, isn't it your job to take care of me? Yet, you don't want to do that, and it's obvious that you can't handle it all because of stuff like this. You still don't understand where I'm coming from, and you're in no position to give me orders anymore or tell me what to do with my life. Because we're not family anymore. We're not related by blood or by love. You are not my mother. You never saw me as a member of the family anyway. That's not true. I saw you as my daughter-in-law, more or less. I mean, I really had no choice. My son did marry you, and I tried to accept you and welcome you into our family, and tried to help you and support you. A daughter-in-law is not a servant at your beck and call. I am my own person. I have my own dreams and goals and opinions. I've always listened to what you said, except about work, because you are my husband's mother. Even when it meant doing things I didn't want to or didn't agree with and sacrificing my own happiness and well-being. Besides, Nate doesn't view you as his mother anymore, so why should I? I don't want to have a relationship with you either. It's time we went our separate ways once and for all. Riley, come on! Just listen to yourself. You're being a drama queen now. You're being unreasonable and irrational. I said that I'm sorry for everything I did in the past. What more do you want from me? What more can I do to make it up to you? Maybe I was a bit resentful towards you because I felt like you took my son away from me. That might be what caused me to lash out at you and treat you badly. Now, can you please ask my son and daughter to come over here, even if just for once? I shouldn't have to spend my birthday all alone. I really do regret the horrible things I've done. Give me a chance to show you that I will change. Listen to me. It's too late to do anything. What's done is done. You can't just say sorry and expect everything to go back to normal. I've been apologizing like crazy to you and that still won't do anything. Are you being serious? Won't you think it over a bit? I don't really think you understand what you are saying or doing. Do you really want to leave my weak old self all alone at this age? Are you not scared or worried about me at all? Don't you care about what happens to me or even have any compassion or sympathy for me? No one did this to you but yourself. You brought this onto yourself by your own actions and words. You're the one that regrets it now because you realize how much you've lost and how much you've missed out on. And I have to say that I'm very happy now. I've been living my best life. I'm trying my best to keep you out of my life. I don't want you to ruin what I have going for me. My mother-in-law only thinks of herself and constantly puts other people down to feel superior. And she will never admit when she is wrong or ever try to change her ways, no matter how much people complain to her. And to this day, she has been living all alone in her old age. I heard that she doesn't even have anyone to come to visit her. I also heard that she's been having quite a hard time after Clara cut her out of her life. With her gone, Hazley feels like she has no one to turn to anymore. As for me and Nate, we don't want to see my mother-in-law ever again. And for my daughter, she's been showered with love by my parents. They live with us and make her happy. She doesn't have to worry about being compared or criticized. My sweet daughter is always kind and affectionate to me. Even though my mother-in-law's actions damaged our relationship and left me with emotional scars, I learned a valuable lesson from it all. I learned how important it is to surround yourself with positive influences. From now on, I'm going to cherish those I truly love and show them my gratitude.